Whatever you want to
keeps coming to my heart tonight. Father, 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 the one that we cling to, the one that walks beside us, the one that holds us. Father, we thank you tonight. We honor you tonight. Father, 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 we thank you.
Thank you, Lord, that Holy Spirit, that you are revealing the Father heart of God tonight. And Lord, help us to, those of us that don't know how to trust you, help us just to open our heart and just and just say it out loud by faith, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. And maybe by faith, you may not even know how, but I believe tonight God is just pouring in his love and he's bringing revelation to us here. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Okay, ladies, I just want to tell you that we have a schedule on the back of your name tag. But the Holy Spirit has his schedule tonight, okay? And we're submitting that schedule to his. And so if at any point it gets too late and you need to walk across the hallway get a snack or you need to move on out to your home, so we, you know, we, we'll tie you here. But you do not want to leave until the Holy Spirit is through, amen? Because we don't want to miss. So we're about to have LaVon Chandler come out. And I just want to, some of you, how many here have never heard LaVon Chandler before? There's quite a few here, all right. Well, you're in for an amazing, Surprise and blessing. LaVon Chandler, I'm going to just read this, okay? She's an ordained minister. She's president and founder of Touched by Grace Ministries. Called to the nations. She ministers under fiery, prophetic anointing, and that is so true, in churches, conferences, and revivals throughout the world. She's a voice for this hour to encourage and to equip a sold-out forerunner army of believers. Ladies, that includes you, okay? And she is a, uh, uh, the, her desire, her heart's desire is to see the body of Christ in passionate pursuit of the lover of our souls, amen? Is that your desire? I know it's mine. And uh, she is devoted to equipping of the body to move in freedom and authority, to be unified and unstoppable, and to flow in their gifts and callings by changing the act is they go out into the world making disciples. Somebody say yes, amen. Hallelujah. So listen, ladies. We're, we're sitting under the anointing of God tonight, but also the anointing of the prophet. Amen. So let's just say yes, Lord. LaVon, would you come? Do you want this up here? Or do you want it down there? What do you want? Okay. Okay. Display the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. 
Amen? It does excite it. Amen? And even though everything around looks crazy, amen, we're here for a purpose. Amen? We're definitely here for a purpose. Now, there's a thing. Yes, Lord, I hear you speaking. Amen? I pray that we do hear you speaking. Glory to God. But if you're not, you will be before this weekend's over in the name of Jesus. Amen? You know, in those scriptures, that's kind of the, the theme of this weekend. In those scriptures, it, it speaks of that in, the, in Revelations. Over and over, the Lord said, He who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Get it right, we're all uh, crucifying. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and so we see that. And one thing that the Lord is, I was praying for each one of you, for this meeting, for each one of you. One of the, can y'all see me right there? Or can everybody see me? Right. One of the things that the Lord kept saying over and over to me is how important it is for us to hear the voice of the Lord through love. Amen. Now, I'm, well, I'm going to make an establish, I'm going to establish that because where we're going is the part we play in the time that we're living in. And I'm going to go in that tomorrow afternoon, son. But we must be established in love. Amen. I'm talking about not being a good person. That's good. But honestly, you can only do that so long without the Holy Ghost, and all of a sudden you find out the meat part. Amen. That was there. I mean, it's only by the love of God can we really love like God loves. Amen. But the Lord, what He wants us to understand is in the book of Revelations, the whole book of Revelations has to do with God's love for us. Amen. Even in all the tribulations, and I'm not going to go through there, all the plagues that He releases out. And, you know, he does when, none of that just went bam, 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 and in, in three days that all happened. It's a period of timing that it unfolds. And every plague, what he's really doing is he's long-suffering. And he's saying, now will you come to me? He keeps giving people time now. So we don't, when we read Revelation, if we don't see it out of the love of God, we end up reading it out of we are going to die. We are going to be destroyed. We don't have a chance. It's doomsday. It's all gloom and doom, and God's going to destroy us all. And we begin to hear it like that, and it's hard to, to relate to God of love if all that's happening. But all through those, the whole unfolding of it is him saying, please come. Please come. Please come. And that's how he's written the, the, the book of Revelation. Amen? It all starts with love, and it ends with love. It's interesting to me. That the very end, the last part of the of the word of God, the written word of God, it talks about this bride love. Let the spirit of the bride say, "Come." I mean, she's in love with him. Amen. So what the Lord was showing me is how important it is to some things that we need to deal with. We're going to go deep, and we're going to release fire tonight. It'll probably more than likely he'll release it well. Amen. Because that's just how the word is. Amen. So get your expectors up and don't think, oh, I already heard this or whatever. Amen? He wants us to understand that he is, doesn't just love us. He is ravishly in love with us. Amen? Like he um, is fiercely in love with us. We've got to get this because if we struggle, so many struggle with receiving the love of God. Amen. And if we read the word, are we are we are we hearing his voice? You can hear from him a small still voice through his word, through somebody giving you a word. Amen. Through him speak, speaking, speaking the whisper within you. Yeah, absolutely through showing you things. Amen. But we must see that that he is absolutely for you and not against you. Amen. He is working all the time to turn everything around for your good. Amen. And he is not like you're going to make a mistake and he's going to kick you out. So what happens is, if we don't get the love part down, we struggle with the walk with him because we relate everything about him to some relationship that we had in our life. Amen. We relate to him by maybe a father that never approved of you or a mother that you could never do good enough for. We relate late to him as how some man hurt us, or your man may have been some woman hurt you. Amen? How we relate to letting people down. How we, like, all of that is filtered. So when we begin to hear his word, we don't interpret it through love. 
We interpret it through, I'm in trouble, I'm letting down, I'm not good enough, I don't know, I'm not the, 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 I'm not the favorite, I'm, I'm uh, always striving, striving for him to be proud of me. And every word we hear from the Lord ends up feeling like he is condemning us, he is judging us, he's ready to kick us out of the family. Am I doing something wrong? Thank you, baby. Did I kick it off? I told him I was going to do that probably. I'm mad about that. Amen? And, thank you, baby. And so what happens is we, all our walk with the Lord, we're not really established yet. Hey, no matter what it looks like, God's got this, and he is crazy in love with me, and he is not, hallelujah, going to let me be destroyed, and he is not going to, hallelujah, hurt me, let me down, kick me out, and all that. Amen? So, glory, do you know that it is absolutely impossible to love him in the way that he has created us to love him until we receive his love? And we can say all day long, the church is probably, I would say, more than likely 90% of, of, of the bride of Christ, the sons and daughters of God, have not really got hold of how crazy he is about you. Amen? It's the most secure place there is. Amen. It's a place that you can live that you don't have to be afraid. It's a place that you can live like, I don't know how you're going to work this out, but you will because I know you love me. And the more you see his love for you, the more you love him back. Amen. I love the song that we were singing about, about the religion and, and all that. I love that. I love that. Uh, um, a song because it's so true. Because you can think you're the most unreligious person in the world and be the most religious one, and you're caught up and bound up, and I'm not just saying you and beating you up. It's going to be good. Look at your life. This is going to be good. Amen. I may speak some tough stuff, but hallelujah, it always turns out good. Amen. And so glory. I mean, the Lord is. He's going down deep. You know why? He doesn't want us just say. He wants us whole. And he wants us whole and it wants us on fire because we have a mandate hallelujah and it's going to be the burning ones glory to god that's going to be carrying it out in this hour in the name of jesus amen isn't that awesome and god i'm going to get to that later all right i got, can't get before, i can't go ahead myself because i want to because i just know where we're going amen but the lord hallelujah he wants that and some of you you can some of you know deep down inside i struggle I struggle with, with I struggle with rejection all my life. And so because I've struggled with re rejection, hallelujah, it's hard for me to really believe that God accepts me like that. It is crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. You know, I look at it like this, Lord, you have given, you have really offered a deal that you get the short end of the stick here. But you know what? I'll take it. Amen. You know what you're getting into, I guess, you know, so I'll take it. And glory to God, I say all the time. When the Lord came and, and, and baptized me in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, when he did, he began literally loving the hell out of me. I don't know how else to say it, but he began to love the hell out of me. He loved me, and he loved me, and he loved me, and he kept loving me, and he kept telling me, hallelujah, how much he loved me. And even though I wasn't really hearing him speaking, maybe I wasn't getting it all, he just kept loving me and loving me until, glory to God, I began to see that. Amen? And so, glory. So let me go just for a second, and we're going to go into Scripture. But let me just say this as we begin. Um, the Lord does have a mandate for us. Hallelujah. And many, many are in a, in, a, in a valley of decision. And we look at that as being lost souls, and yes, that's part of it. The world is just messed up right now, and many are definitely, we're all in that valley. But I want to talk about those of the body of Christ. We are in a valley of decision. We are placed in a window in time that we must, hallelujah, hear him speaking, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, get the now word of God, glory to God, and we must, hallelujah, decide, glory to God, to embrace his fire, hallelujah, and step into the mandate, and it has everything to do with saving our nation, it has everything to do with bringing the kingdom of God to earth as it is in heaven. Amen. See, the kingdom's already here. Glory to God. We just need to come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. That sounds better. We should be getting a little bit closer. Up. All right, so I want to go. It was kind of strange that the Lord had to go here. Um, 
uh, because I, I thought I was going at first to war. And he took me here. And he took me to Song of Solomon. I thought, Lord, this is very interesting. He's adding kind of to a word that he's been speaking to me uh, uh, prophetically and where we're at, where we're going, what our mandate is. Let me, let me say this too. In every generation, hallelujah, of the Esther Bride living, that's the church living in that generation. In every generation Esther of the Esther, amen, there is a mandate. God knew when you would live, hallelujah, he knew where you would live, and he's not shook up one bit about what's going on. Amen. He's already been in your future. Amen. He's been in our future. Glory to God, he wrote the story. Amen. Amen. And so he also gives revelation to empower us and equip us to walk out. Hallelujah, that mandate. Our mandate is always, hallelujah, to lead people to Christ. Yes, that's part of it. Amen. Our mandate is always to be in love with him. Yes, that's part of it. But for every generation, God has an assignment for the church, hallelujah, to bring the order of heaven into the world right then. Hallelujah. And so we'll see that later. But I want to go, glory to God, to, to, to Song of Solomon. And I want, this is a, for you that may not have read it, I'm going to read out the passion that I hope that's all right with you. But, but, and this, yeah, we say we're in, because of Song of Solomon, when you read it out of the passion, it's just, it really breaks it down for us. Amen. And um, when you begin to read the Song of Solomon, if you never have, the Song of Solomon is a love story. And it's, if, you, if you've heard it preached to be like about a marriage or about don't wake and love teenager before it's time and stuff like that, that all can definitely be used as, as examples or patterns, absolutely. But it also is a written story about you and the bridegroom. Amen? Now, you might not think this is prophetic, but you're going to see. Amen? So it's about you and the bridegroom and this love story or this journey that progresses. Everybody in this place is, is at a different place. Amen? What is so wonderful about the Lord is he has all these different facets or characters. Amen? He's a he's, he's Savior. He's, he's Lamb of God. Amen? He's Shepherd. And you see, he's king, he's bridegroom, he's teacher. And you know, that's when the angels are going, holy, holy, holy in heaven, because they're seeing him forever in eternity, another facet of who he is. You'll never run out. So if you feel like maybe that I already know everything there is to know about him, you have to scratch the surface, because if they're going in eternity doing that, we haven't even begun to see it all. Amen? Hallelujah. But in this, it so describes, and I'm going to get to the place where I believe that we are right now, hallelujah, and what God is doing. And in this story, hallelujah, your love story, say, it's my love story. You should, you should read the Word of God. Do you know your name? You should read the Word of God, hallelujah, as a personal word to you. Amen? And it's just a history book. Amen? You need, a, you need to go and say, Lord, what are you saying to me in this right now? Amen? See, he wants to speak some things. He wants to go sit down deep in, in some things. And so we see, hallelujah, she starts on this, this love journey with him in the very beginning. Every one of you will be able to identify where you're at. Amen? And she starts with this. In the very first, she says, oh, kiss me with the kisses of your mother. You know, I want revelation, but I just kiss you with the kisses of your mouth. And, and I mean, give me revelation. Draw me in to you and take me. And she's, oh, yes, 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 she's having a moment. <laughs> you know, he loves it. He gets his, he just loves us. And oh, we get right in the middle of the fire burning on us. And that moment right there that we're having an encounter with God. And we say, whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you want. And he says, okay. And he, so he takes serious this chapter one of her saying that. Draw me into you. Take me with you. I mean, she, she, he's asked, she's asked him to do that, but she's still really immature. Amen? And in this immaturity, you'll find, and I'm going to just hit parts of it because it's sake of time, but in this mature immaturity, she talks about herself a whole lot. Amen? It's about me. And if it's about my dirtiness or about how wonderful I am, it's all about her. Amen? 
Immaturity does that. When you first come in, she starts telling you. She's not aware at all of her, her of that she's now taking on his righteousness. I remember with me, when I baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, I, I, I knew nothing. I never read a whole book in my entire life, much less the Bible. And I would experience, and then I, he would show me in the Bible what I was experiencing. <coughs> I have just been such a, God gave, has given me a gift of a, 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 a blessing for a child like that. If he says it, I believe it, that's it. If he says, do it, I do it, that's it. I don't say, well, what if it meant this? I don't do that. I just take him as he speaks, so I do it. Amen? And so, um, when I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I had no idea that of anything to do with the righteousness of Christ. I had no idea that he made an exchange with me, and, and he took upon himself my sins, and I took on his righteousness. I didn't know that. Then you would think I did. No, I heard three, and when I got saved, and I heard John 3, 16, and you know, they had an altar call, and my little heart was convicted, and, and I knew I had hate my heart, and, and I needed a Savior. And I just child like I received Jesus at 11 years old. And no one taught me anything after that. There was no discipleship. I thought the Holy Ghost passed away. Seriously, I was told, well, that was back then. Because you know what? Back then, maybe they needed the power of God back then because the world was such a mess. Hello. Amen. And so I mean, God knows you're going to sin, and it's all right, and then someday you'll go to heaven. And that's what I knew. That's all I knew. That's all I knew. At all. Amen. And, and so I, my life is crazy. So, so now... At, at 28 years old, I get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I got all those years thinking Holy Ghost was gone. And I go to a meeting, and um, in one one worship service, I went hungry. I didn't go to the meeting because I was hungry. I went because it sounded like a good, fun time for girls. So I went to a retreat with women just because I thought it was a fun time. It would be a fun time. No hunger at all. I wasn't even seeking after him. I went out of town for the fun. And he set me up. So I get set up. I get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And when I came home, I immediately started going into visions. Immediately. And I remember the first thing that happened is I wanted to hear the voice of God. I wanted to. I happened to read. I couldn't get it. I was in that Bible. I couldn't read it up. And I read that the trumpet would blow and we would hear talked about hearing his voice, and I got so desperate at that time to hear his voice. It's like I thought he was going to die if I didn't hear it. I, I got to hear his voice. I got to hear his voice. And I read something about fasting in some Christian book, and I didn't even know he was leading me on it. I actually just thought I was thinking, that sounds like a good idea, that's what I need to do. And so I fast. I go on fast to hear his voice. And the Lord took me and just to make it short, the Lord took me into a vision, and he said these words to me. He said, um, fear not. Now, I won't even go into detail of where he took me when he said that. But fear not. Walk in my ways. Persevere in my pureness, mine, and my holiness, so that trials and tribulations will be nothing to you. Take my scepter. He didn't just have me touch it. He gave it to me. I have read it through. So I took it. If the religious would have got home, he said, I'll honey. No, no. She touched it. But he handed it to me. I can work better. I took it in the vision. And he said, and it's under. He said, go forth. And it's under. I heard him audibly speak this word. Yes, did he speak to me all the way all the time? I so wish he would. Oh, I wish he would. He doesn't all the time. No. But he did this time. I was so desperate. And he said, Take my scepter, go forth, it thundered again, and know that I'm always thundered again with you. And I went, like a white tornado, and was out of the vision. Well, I didn't know what he was talking about when he said, my pureness and my holiness. I had no idea. None. What, I didn't know any, there was nothing to, there was nothing to delete. There was nothing up there. No teaching. Amen. And so now I look and I see that just like her, I had no idea what I got. It's like he gave me this 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 scepter, hallelujah, and me this little childlike faith takes it, hallelujah, and through the years, through hunger and 
pressing in to him because of hunger. It's like the power of God began to just instantly start moving in my life. And it was like I was this little girl that was going like this, you know, and people were going, I had no idea he had put authority in my hand. I think many times about how he must have watched that and thought, she'll grow up someday. <laughs> Until then, I guess everybody's going out. I don't know. But I, I was like her. I want everything you thought. I want everything you thought. But I really didn't know what I was asking for. Amen. And so she starts talking about, she starts talking about me. And she doesn't know that she's been cleaned and she's taken on his righteousness. So she talks about how dirty she is and how dark she is. She talks about all her flaws and, you know, all of the probably what she can't do and I don't feel like it and all that because she had zero revelation that he had already made her righteous. Already. And so here she is. I don't know how long chapter one took. I don't know how long chapter one took in your life. I don't know if you're still in chapter one. Amen? What I do know is, hallelujah, he has way more for us than wallowing in our old self because we're a new creation. Hallelujah. And we've not taken on a new creation mindset. We're still taking the old creation mindset around with us. Amen? So all she can hear, hallelujah, all she can do is talk about me, me, me. It isn't even talking about him. Now look what she does. Glory to God. We're going deep, so get ready. Amen? But look what she does. She's telling him how horrible she is. I used to tell him, I said, God, I just hate these fat legs. <laughs> I just hate them. And I go to, to spend, I, I go to prayer and spend time with him, and I just tell him, I just hate this, I just hate the way I look, I hate this, and I just hate this about me, and I hate that about me, and this is wrong about me. And one day he said to me, he says, I want you to come spend our time together telling me how awesome I am instead of telling me how bad you are. He says, I got like a, a husband that's bought a new dress for a, a, his wife. And he's so in love with her. And he takes her to dinner and she says, Aren't you so beautiful? She says, I feel beautiful. That, my, that dress I bought you is awesome. I don't see that too fat. <laughs> and then, well, I think you're beautiful. And we're trying to literally, we spend half our time trying to tell the Lord, hallelujah, how ugly we are or how we mess it up or maybe do it like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's me again, I'm sorry. Here I am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And so now we have our flight time together, our secret place time, our love place together, and I'm going to spend 30 minutes of it telling you I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Amen? Can anybody relate? Hallelujah. I know you just put a little nugget in there. That's not crazy. As a matter of fact, it's all still in my eyes on myself. Again, and so it's really cool because she's telling him, I know I'm in, in, in chapter one, verse five, she tells, she's telling everybody around, I know I'm, I'm so unworthy. Hallelujah. So in me. And he comes back. She's telling how awful she is. And he doesn't accept that, girls. He didn't listen to that. He comes back and he's saying something. Say he's speaking. And he's speaking these words. Hallelujah. You're so lovely. She's not here. She's too busy talking. <laughs> she says, I feel dark and dry as the desert tents of the wandering nomads. And he turns around and he says, Yet yeah, you're so lovely. She says one negative thing and he's saying it. And what he's saying, she's not getting. All right? She's not getting it yet. She got her mindset on how bad she is and how bad it's always going to be and how mean to me she is. She is never going to get this and look at me and I don't feel like it and all that. And he keeps doing that with, you're lovely. You're beautiful. You're beautiful to me. 
pew at church or the chairs or whatever. We can be there every time the door opened. Hallelujah. We can hear say God say over and over and over and over and over. Hallelujah. How much he loves you. The price he's paid for you. And over and over and over, but not be hearing. God is not talking about hearing his voice. So we're in the I think it went down. I guess I could get another kind of one. Well, that makes sense. Now, he's not talking about having ears to hear with your natural ears. He's called, talking about having ears to hear by the Spirit of the living God with an open heart. And he does it over and over and over. He never accepts what she's saying about her old sex. He never accepts it. He doesn't even pay attention. He interrupts her and says, but you're beautiful. Yeah, but I see. I see your beauty. And yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Amen. We don't have ears to hear and we stay undone. We stay on hold because there's a place with him. Hallelujah. There's a place with him of burning with such hot, fierce, Fiery love, him for you and you for him. That hallelujah, tribulations, trials, hallelujah, they're nothing to you. Nothing can stop you because you're burning so hot with so much love for him. Because why? Hallelujah, not because somebody dripped some oil on you, but because you got revelation that God created me to love. And he, 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 he rebirthed me, glory to God, to be the bride of his son. Amen. So she keeps, he keeps saying, I wonder how many can say that I've been hearing and hearing and hearing, but I struggle with giving. You know? Hallelujah. I was talking to one of the, I can't remember, I think it was Linda the other day, but the other day I was talking about how, you know, you can, you can, you can say something to somebody and say something to somebody and say something to somebody and they don't get it, they don't get it, they don't get it. But you keep saying, you keep watering the sea and watering the sea. And all of a sudden, somebody else, uh, the, uh, the visitor will come to town and say it and they get it. <laughs> you know, they said that God, they're prophesying over me that God loved me. And God, I just got it. God loves me. And God loves you and you and you. And you're like, oh, 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 oh. Amen. Now what you have to do is say, Glory to God, they got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody planted, somebody water, and they keep watering, keep watering, keep watering, keep watering. Hallelujah. But God has a deeper place. All right. Now let me go just for a minute. Let me go just a little bit further. And what happens is, is she he, he keeps saying, and he keeps saying, and he keeps speaking. And she's not hearing, but he still keeps speaking. And he keeps speaking. And he keeps speaking. And all of a sudden, she starts seeing him as something other than just the shepherd. Now she's seeing his shepherd king. The more he speaks love to her, the more she starts seeing who he is. Amen? I mean, she hasn't his bridegroom yet. She hasn't gone in that one place yet. But there's a progression going on. Amen? There definitely is a progression going on. And there's always more. Look at your neighbor and say, always more. Always more. All of a sudden, what happens is, one day, a moment happens. Something happens within her that awakens. And she starts saying, I am his brother. I am his beloved. Something's happening now in her maturity with him that some way, somehow, I don't know how long it took each individual, but he convinces her that glory to God, she really is his beloved. Amen? And then she starts saying that, and then this love thing starts happening. She lavishes love and begins and she starts growing and growing and growing with him. All right, now, and right there, hallelujah, I want to jump somewhere. And then we're going to kind of come back, all right? Can you all stay with me a minute? So what happens is she starts 
maturity, all of a sudden um, she starts getting interested and feels the fruit, the harvest. Is the fruit growing? Are the others maturing? Is what she's talking about. She starts taking on his heart. She starts loving what he loves. One of the things that always comes out of my belly is, I love you most of all, and I love your people. There came a time in my life to where his children became all of mine. It's like what he loved when I would pray for someone, still do. It's like it changed from my son to Jesus to the person standing in front of me. And it just went like that. And I thought I was losing my mind. I said, what is going on? And he said, you have become one with me. You love what I love. You've taken on my heart. we become one. And so I want to show you, because she goes into this relationship, and I'm going to go back to that, but I want to show you all of a sudden something happens. And I want us to think about this tonight. Something happens after she starts growing in her love and see it and receiving his love for her and um, um, start seeing him as different. See him one season of your life, you'll see him as that Savior. In another season of your life, you'll see him as Hallelujah, your Revealer. Another season, you'll see him maybe as Healer, as Deliverer. It never ends. There's never an end to knowing him more. There's never an end to experience him more. Amen? Hallelujah. We also see where she came. He came and he would come and he would look and he would check things out. And he would look and he would check to see if she was ready yet. We hear in the other translations it says don't wake in love before it's time. But it also says, hallelujah, in the Passion, where it breaks it down in the original, it says, don't disturb my love until she's ready to arrive. And, and we hear a lot about a rise and shine. We hear a lot about an awakening and a, and a, and a bride rising, rising up, hallelujah, above the glory of God, even all the darkness that's going on. For the glory of the Lord is upon her. But isn't it interesting that he says, don't disturb her until she's ready to rise up. Don't disturb her. God is doing something. And he's doing that right now in, 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 his, in his people. But all this, hallelujah, and she comes to a place, she's experienced all that, and I believe many, many people are in this place with the Lord right now. That valley of decision. All of this, and then one day, she finds herself in a season that she says, hallelujah, that the devotion, her devotion had come to a slumber. Her devotion had, let me read it exactly like it says, we find it. We've got to get to this point. Hallelujah. I got it more. It's in chapter 5, verse 3. Or verse, no, verse 2. Let's go to 2. Okay, after this, after she's experienced all these things with him and growing in the Lord, Hallelujah. And I believe the Lord is talking now, individually and corporately. She says, after this, I let my devotion slumber. Hmm. But my heart for him stayed awake. And then she has a dream. And in this dream, she says, one comes to her, and the melody of the man I love awakened me. He became, he came in a dream and began to sing over her and he awakened her in the spring. But let's look at this. This is so good. And then it's going to wet your whistle. So then and, 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 and he goes on down and he says, Arise, my love. Open your heart, my daughter, deeper still to me. Will you receive me this dark night? That's very important and it's very prophetic. We are in a timing right now that you could call spiritually in a dark night. And, yet, and look what he says. He says, um, I need you this night to arrive and come be with me. 
He's saying that to the church right now. I need you this night. This night, in this night hour, I need you, hallelujah, to awaken and come with me. Hallelujah. You're my pure, loyal dove and a perfect partner for me. She didn't even turn around and say, can't believe he's so asleep. <laughs> I, after all I've done for you and all you've experienced with me, I can't believe that now you're slumbering. No, she, he's not. He's waking her up. He's waking her up. He said, I need you to wake up. I need you to wake up this night. I need you to wake up. Amen. I need you to come with me now, now. And then he starts, out of all things, bathing her with love again. Amen. He's bathing her with love, and, and, he's, and he's, he's inviting her, he's saying, come. And it says, my flawless one, will you arise? Sometimes we can become, get come into a place of slumber, and we kind of tuck it in, and it's a secret down in here. Hallelujah. And we just can't even imagine him not coming and beating us up. But he's not. And he's not being the other ones up there asleep. He's waking up. Amen. He's not. He isn't coming and beating everybody up. He is wooing. He is drawing. He's singing over his slumbering bride. He's breathing over her. Hallelujah. He's coming with fresh fire for her glory, glory, glory. Before every uh, every outpouring, hallelujah, there ever was, it, was, it came before, hallelujah, either a war, a depression, something happened. God came with an outpouring first that strengthened his bride and got her on fire, hallelujah, to be the ones for it. Brought her order into the earth, glory to God, and was ready. God cannot bring an outpouring if we're not on fire ready. Amen. He said that again. He's not going to bring a harvest of souls in for you to help nurture and grow up the infants if we're not burning on fire. He doesn't want to wake them up and bring them into a dead church. He don't want to bring them, hallelujah, into the care of people that are lukewarm. He doesn't want hallelujah. He, glory, glory. The harvest is there and it's ripe and it has been ripe. And I'm telling you, we are in the perfect storm for the greatest outpouring and harvest. But the harvest cannot come unless the bride's on fire. Because the bride's the one that disciples the harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So glory. Look what happens. And he's saying, Put, uh, uh, I need you this night. I need you this night. Wake up. And he says, cause the flawless one. For my heaviness and tears are more than I can bear. I've spent myself for you throughout the dark night. Now listen to the next part. I've already laid aside my own garments for you, she says. Father, would you give me some drink of your water? I've already laid aside my own garments. You know, we, we read that and say, well, she's already laid up. She's already got her nightgown on. And then, you know, she just don't want to get up and, you know, and she wants to put it off. And But look what she's really saying. When you look it up in the original and you see what it's saying, this is so good. She says, I've already laid aside my own garments for you. How can I take them up again since I've yielded my righteousness to yours? <laughs> she finally, she's already gotten a hold of you being her righteousness. She's already grown to that point. But look what she says next. Hallelujah. You've cleansed my life and you've taken me so far. Next word she tells me. Isn't that enough? What? I mean, I got saved. I got saved, and, and, and you know, I gave my life. I walked up to the altar, and I surrendered my life. Hallelujah. And I stayed in there long enough to find out that, hey, you know, you made an exchange here. You took my sins, and I've already put on the clothes of righteousness. Am I supposed to take those off again? Is this enough? Is this, I mean, I've done enough for you, haven't I? I've surrendered enough, haven't I? I mean, after all, I said the sinner's prayer. Isn't that enough? Wow. And he's saying, but I need you to, to I need you to arise this night. 
And she's bound up with... <sighs> See, sometimes we don't want to hear what he says because we're afraid what he's going to say to us. We don't want to listen, and so we talk, 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 or we get busy, 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 busy. We do this, we do that, hallelujah, or we jump up every time the Holy Ghost starts moving because we really don't want to hear what he has to say. We're waiting for him to beat us up because we fell asleep. And he just starts bathing us with love again. Here he comes again. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're in a night out. And a bride has been saying, how much more do you want? I mean, it is enough. Hallelujah. I got saved. What's sad is we can slumber, and we can, she slumbered in her devotion to me. It's how she got to that place. She started slumbering and getting lazy in her devotion to him, hallelujah, and she didn't keep um, uh, uh, maintaining that love place with her, with him. And so what happens is she gets so deceived that she, she's been in love with him. And now she's saying, it is enough. Let me tell you, when we find out the mandate, when we really get our eyes open to the mandate, we understand why he's calling us in the night hour. He's telling us, get up. And the Bible says he starts knocking. The beloved, he starts knocking. And he starts knocking on the, on, on the door. And he, and he begins to, he's, he's, he's beginning to call out. He wants, he's knocking. He's knocking on the doors of his sons and his daughters right now. His bride, he's knocking on the door right now of their heart. He's, he's continuing to knock, but she hesitated. I believe he's come from generation to generation, and I believe that he has knocked on the door of the generation of the bride. Hallelujah. I believe they have to do that. I believe that he knocked on the generation of the bride, but some hesitated. What generation hesitated at opening the door quickly and letting him in or going with him? What generation missed their mandate because they didn't open the door when he was knocking? What generation missed the, the window of time that he had for the church, hallelujah, to deliver the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven? Who will open the door quickly? Who will open when he knocks at the door of your heart and he says, God, open up. This is not an hour. I need you to come with me. Who will have eyes to see? Who will have ears to hear? Hallelujah. And she hesitated. And when she hesitated, he left. He left. He left. Hallelujah. She even smelled the fragrance of his, his, his fragrance when he was knocking. There was oil left on the doorknob. But hallelujah, he left. When he came to the door saying, there's a window right now, beloved, we must wake up. There's a window right now, you must come with me. I need you to come with me. You see, because you're my partner here on earth. It's you and my spirit that, hallelujah, will do kingdom business on this earth. I need my love the bride. She's the one. She's the one in partnership with me. I need you in this night hour, hallelujah, to open the door. We've got to open the door. The door's being knocked on all over the body of Christ. Many are out and away from the things of God or off on some bumped trail, hallelujah, of stupid religions. Amen. So many are deceived and they're doing that. But I'm telling you, hallelujah, that God, glory, glory. I don't know what's wrong. I didn't put that on. I'm telling you, the Lord is saying, hallelujah. He is saying that glory. I'm waking you up and I'm waking you up and I'm waking you up and I'm waking you up. And it may look like right now, but there is no way we have any hope. Don't kid yourself. I'm telling you, in a moment of time, this woman had a dream. And one night she had a dream, hallelujah. And he began to come and begin to wake up. The question is, will we open the door, or hallelujah, will we hesitate? Amen? Will we open the door, or will we hesitate? It's so important for us to understand that hallelujah, it's the lover ride that hallelujah will be on the front lines of all this. It will be the burning ride, hallelujah, not one that's slumbering with her devotion. Not one that's lazy, hallelujah, about the things of God. Not one that is like the Laodicean church.
church that's met their first love. Hallelujah. Boy, our, our, the, our Ephesus. Not the ones, the, not the lukewarm ones, not the ones who've left, hallelujah, the, their first love. God is saying, hey, have ears to hear what my spirit is saying. It's my mercy and my love that is crying out, wake up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, but when you back up, and you begin to read the scriptures, and you begin to see, every, over and over, he came to her to see if she was ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You don't want to be smart because you're going to find out what you're ready for. We're going to get you burning tonight. Amen? Are you ready? And he would look, and he would check, and he would, he would, he would examine, is she ready to go? Amen? Then there came a time that he came up. And he invited her to go with him to the hot place. Come go with me. Come go up with me. That's not rapture. Amen. And yes, it can be come embrace the sufferings of Christ. Absolutely. But that gets you, hallelujah, seated in the place of authority with the Lord. Come up, come up. Come on, live out my world while you're in the world. Amen. And you know what she says? She says, oh, you know, I hear you calling and everything, but these shadows and fears. You just go ahead and go, and I'll go at a later time, she says. You, you go ahead, you go, you go on up, and I know you'll come back again and ask me again, but you go on, and I'll come at a later time. But I got these fears that I just can't, you know, I'm afraid. I'm afraid what me going, I'm afraid what experience and more may be. I'm afraid of answering the call to the mandate, or I'm afraid to go into deeper love with you, or I'm afraid, hallelujah, to go glory, 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 deeper into your spirit. I'm afraid to know you any more than what I know you. You know, you may ask something to me that I'm not comfortable with. I'm afraid. And being afraid caused her to tell him, leave without me. I'll go at another time. That's exactly what it says. You go on, I know there'll be another time. Beloved, hear me. Beloved, hear me. There'll be one day there's not another time. If you give excuses long enough, hallelujah, he'll find somebody else. Amen. You say, oh, go on. You do. Lord, no, you know. I've got enough, as one of the churches says, you know, I've got all that I need. And he says, you poor thing. You think you're rich and you are in poverty. You poor, wretched thing. You think you will, you think you will ride and there's no more? You're no different than her saying, isn't this enough? Where do we get this idea that we're doing God a favor? Showing up to church. I mean, isn't that enough? <laughs> I mean, at least I showed up. We want to compare it to everybody. I showed up. They didn't even show up. <laughs> well, I came in 45 minutes later, but hey, that's better than the ones that didn't come at all. I mean, isn't this enough? Y'all ought to be, y'all ought to thank me. Y'all ought to thank me for even being here. Y'all ought to thank me. Look at what all I did, and I did, and I did, and I did. Just look. I sat the chairs, I laughed on the floor, I did this, I did that. I mean, I've been working hard. You ought to be thanking me for it. And he said, no. Oh. No, well, that's good that you've done all that. But if you're not in love, burning hot, in love with me, you're not ready. Amen. You're not ready. Hallelujah. So he would look to see if she's ready. Oh, but don't, don't stir up my love. Don't you stir up my love until she's ready to ride. She's not ready to ride yet. Amen. She's not ready to ride. She's too, she too full of excuses still. She's not ready to ride. She had a conference of 
fears. She's not willing to go with me afraid. She don't want to go with me good afraid, baby. No, I can't. I'll go later. Because you know he is ever loving, and you know what? He always comes back. He always comes back. He always knocks on my door. He'll be back. Will he? If we're in an urgent time right now, hallelujah, the time is ticking in a timing that we are in our land. The only thing that's going to put out the fires of hell going on is going to be the burning ones with the fire of God. The only way we have any hope is a divine intervention. You understand that? Amen. You do understand. Amen. Amen. And so with a divine intervention, there's just one thing we're not seeing. Is the divine intervention comes through his children. Amen. I know I made us later do the little bar one. Shouldn't have done that. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. She goes, he comes back, is she ready yet? Is she ready yet? Is, is she ready for the great harvest? Is she ready for the great outpouring? Is she ready or is she still giving me excuses and thinks she can just jump in the last minute? Does she have a little oil? Does she got extra oil in her lamp? She have oil in her lamp, some extra oil with her? And yet, is she burning with fire? Hallelujah, she giving excuses. And yet, hallelujah. He goes and he looks, and there comes a time he says, she's ready. She's ready this time. I so believe that he is waking us. And this is where, look at what happens. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So, I'm having to skip through so much of it, but it's okay. I think I'm doing all retreats so you can come and get the rest of it, right? Hallelujah. Now, in, verse, in chapter 4, verse 6, it's so good. This is what she says. I've made up my mind. That's good. You know the Lord will not force himself. He's not going to kick your door down. He's not going to force you. But he will find a people. Hallelujah. That says, put me in the fire, set me on fire, and don't let me out, and don't let me go out. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. I made up my mind until the darkness disappears and the dawn is fully gone. Come. In spite of shadows and fears, I will go to the mountain top. She's hearing. The urgency in his voice, and she's responding, I made up my mind. Whether I'm afraid or not, whether I know how it's all going to turn out or not, there is no turning back for me. I'm going with you full force in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, this is so important, this next part. And so he begins to speak. And he says, every part of you is so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty without flaw within. Now you're ready. Amen? Now you're ready. No more excuses. You're ready. My bride, to come with me as we climb the highest peaks together. Together, Come with me through the archway of trust. And he goes down and he says, he starts speaking, he says, Together we will wage war. That's interesting. Together, we're going to wage this war. Together, when our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of darkness, evil spirits in heavenly places, hallelujah. And there is a war, glory to God, and he uses the saints or the bride for war. And he says, now that you're willing to go, and quit giving me excuses, now that you said, even if there's fear there, hallelujah, you're ready, glory to God, because you are willing to go, glory, glory, and not wait till everything is broke off of you. You just say, I'll go, God, and it'll break off as you go. He says, now, woo, you're perfect. Now, hallelujah, you're ready. And together, we'll wage the war. Hallelujah, we're experienced. Hallelujah. Okay, so 
So let me go a little bit past that. I have to skip so much. I'll go read it. It's boring, but all right. So, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go glory, glory, glory. He's waking her up. I have to go to this. Amen. And this is in the last chapter 8. I want you to hear this. The bridegroom, the king is speaking now. He's no her. She's knowing him now, the bridegroom king. She's knowing him as, I'm yours and you're mine. We're one now. Hallelujah. I'm your bride. I am the one you're in love with. I have been totally convinced. Hallelujah. You love me. I am totally convinced that you have consumed me with your love. Who is this one? Let's look at her. Look at her name, it says. She arises out of her desert, clinging to her beloved. And when I awakened you under the apple tree, as you were feasting upon me, I awakened your innermost being with the travail of birth. Now listen, this is our part right now. And then we're going to just start reading some Verse 6. This is an instruction for you tonight. God's going to do something in you tonight. He's about to rekindle or about to, I want to say, refire you. Amen. He wants to refire his bride. Hallelujah in this hour. Amen. If you say, I've already been baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I've already been baptized in fire, and I've already experienced that, you know, it, it, isn't that enough? Amen? But the ones that says, I'll never get enough. Look at my grandmother. The Holy Ghost is moving. When her knees started doing that, the Holy Ghost is starting to do that. You know. She goes, they go, both of them go everywhere. The two little ones, they go, say, say to us here, the two little ones go everywhere they can go that I'll take them and we'll preach. They want to be in every service they can get in. Amen? Hallelujah. They're hungry, hungry. It's almost like putting me in a coach. God heals through them. It's amazing. They don't even know they have to say anything. They just touch and compassion starts flowing and they get people get healed. It's the most amazing thing. Amen. Hallelujah. They're hungry. They are they have the cry within them. It'll never be enough. I want more. I want more. Some people will say, well, you know, I don't think all that's necessary. I don't think the fire is necessary. I don't think all that stuff's necessary. And I don't think, and that's just overreaction. And I don't. But let me tell you something. Those wood stays wet. The others become a bonfire or an explosion. Amen. If you get, if you can just, if the Holy Spirit stirs us, and you can begin to get just hungry, expectant. I don't know how I'm going to see you tonight. I don't even know exactly how I'm experiencing you. But I make room for you, God, to come do whatever you want to. I hear you speaking and inviting me, and my heart is open, glory to God. And every touch, every encounter, like Bristol ministered the other day, hallelujah, we don't want to sizzle. We want an explosion. We sizzled long enough and we keep sizzling out. We need an all-consuming baptism of fire. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I go around all the time and say, baptize my, my, baptize my soul in fire. I mean, baptize every part of me. Come consume me in every part. God, I never want to take for granted the fire of God that you have put in my life. Lord, let it never die down. I need another breath. Bring on me again. God, I make room for you. I got to have more. I want more. I want more. I got to experience another kiss. Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Here's my cheek, God. Here's my life, God. I got to have another lightning. Oh, glory. Strike me with your lightning. Oh, God, strike me with all. Oh, one more time. And the more you do that, the more that fire will. 
is a seal of fire forevermore. Look at your neighbor and say, a little dab won't do it. I don't want to sizzle. I don't want to sizzle. Amen. I've had enough sizzling. What do go? People go, this a lot of You're going to be needing to be burning ones. 
You need to be burning with my glory fire. Hallelujah. You need to be blazing hot. Glory, glory, glory. So nothing can extinguish what I put in you.
a baptism of holy, unrelenting, fierce fire. And God, in the mighty name of Jesus, it changes everything in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Burn with the fire and the glory of God. And I want you to stand right there because we're going to begin to increase in Jesus' name. Glory, glory, glory. So this is my question tonight. My question, have you, have you slumbered in your devotion? Amen. Have we, have we slumbered in our devotion? Have we shrunk back? Have we not gave him our all? Because he needs you this night hour. God don't need anything. Oh, yes, he said he did. And the reason is, is because he set the whole thing up for his bride to be his partner. If you don't know Jesus, hallelujah, tonight, tonight, tonight. Anybody here not saved? I'm not born again. I've never even received him. I've never got on the journey. Anybody here not saved? Well, let's not go any further this weekend if you want. Anybody here not saved? Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody not baptized in the Holy Spirit? In just a few minutes, you will be. Yes, okay? There's probably, there's some others, too, in the name of Jesus. And I believe just if we're going to do it in just a minute, I believe as you come up, God's going to begin to just baptize you in the Spirit of the Holy Father. Holy Ghost. Some over here. Amen. Raise your hands so, so, so you're making a commitment. 